What is up, everyone? And welcome in to another episode of the Mars Pod. I am Nathan Marzian, joined by Brandon Eckel. Um, Bucks Celtics game two just ended. Tough one for the Bucks, but I know I'm not too upset. I was, you know, more upset at halftime. Obviously, first half, you only, you know, you had something to do in the second. You, you actually couldn't watch the second half. Yeah. To begin with, and I'm sure you didn't mind that at halftime because they were down so much, they were looking so bad. Um, so you didn't watch the second half, but um, obviously, you know, it, it, it was a very bad game, but the second half, they did play, um, a lot better. There were things that can be taken from it that I think, you know, going forward into games three, games four, like, I feel, I feel okay. You know, again, I, at halftime, it was like, wow, like, you know, this is Giannis, you know, going to be able to do anything in this game. They just have him on lockdown is, um, you know, it, it are they, the defense going to step up at all, but they did. I mean, it. And again, I'll I'll kind of talk about it with you because you didn't see as much of the second half. Um, Giannis turned it on in the third quarter. I want to say he had because he had five at halftime. I want to say he had sixteen or eighteen in the third to get up to like 21, 23. Mm-hmm. Bucks didn't make a huge dent. Um, they got it down to fifteen at one point. I think with four or five minutes left, and the Celtics got it back up. Got it down to like seventeen at the end of the third. So they never got super close. Then in the fourth, they got it down to like 12, 13. Um, you know, Giannis, Giannis just in the second half looked like he was like, okay, like I'm going to score, you know, I I got to get my scoring going. And he always does this. I feel like there's been plenty of times where, um, I, I mean, I literally just tweeted it and and quoted my tweet where from months ago where I said, every time Giannis has a poor game in the first half, like, you know, you look at halftime, you're like, wow, he only has five points or he only has, you know, seven points, whatever it is. He always ends up with like 30 at the end of the game because I feel like like he knows, okay, I got to get going. And he just comes out in the third quarter, comes out in the second half and is like, I'm going to score no matter what it takes. And so, yeah, again, it was good to see that, okay, at least, you know, he's capable of scoring against this defense. He's capable of, you know, going off at times. Um, what did you see? Like, like, what was your thoughts? In the, I'll give my thoughts as well. But what were your thoughts on the first half? What were your thoughts on um, Giannis' performance? The offense's performance, the team as a whole, like just in general. I know it wasn't very good. Obviously, the first half sucked, but um, like, is it something you're worried about going forward? I mean, I wouldn't say I'm worried because to me, it's kind of like I was really happy the way we played game one offensively and defensively. And then they just went out there and didn't really play good. And I mean, and really just the first half, as we talked, even though I didn't watch, we only we outscored them by two in the second half. So obviously, we kind of figured it out. Um, but that first, well, really the first and second quarter killed us, but Celtics just couldn't miss to start the game. Um, I didn't like the offense at all from what I saw. It was like, it looked totally different than game one. And maybe it was, you know, the Celtics making adjustments on defense, but I didn't like Lopez taking one shot the whole game. I didn't like Giannis getting in the same spot in the post and trying to back down Grant Williams, and he just couldn't really do it. And then he's, you know, trying to get his little turnaround fadeaway going. But it's like, that's a shot you get when you're, 10, 12, 13 points in, not, okay, I'm 0 for 3. Now I'm forcing up these shots. Now I'm trying to just keep backing them down. Um, Connaughton was really good, so that was a good sign. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't like the way we looked in the first half at all, and obviously it was clear why. But Yeah, the, sorry, yeah, the, the first the first quarter and, the, like, the very first part of the game was honestly similar to game one. We came out sloppy. We came out ugly. Giannis had a few turnovers right away, or he had a few, you know, dumb possessions, started taking a ton of jumpers immediately. Like he, he came out and he was terrible at the beginning of the game. You know, I mean, I'm the biggest Giannis fan there is like, he was, I'll admit he was terrible. Um, But it was like, I mean, again, like you said, the jumpers, the trying to like back down Grant Williams and it wasn't working. I felt like, you know, Giannis was forcing it way too much. Like I was like, dude, just be paid. Like that's what got you going in game game one. Like that's what was so you did so well was you were patient. You found guys, um, and then, um, I, like I, there was no ball movement. It was it was a ton of possessions of like just dribbling around. Like Drew kind of had a few possessions where like you just dribble. Everyone's standing on the outside. Throw up a three, no good. Jalen Brown was going off. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was a disastrous first quarter until that very end of the first quarter, they got it close. And then again, the second quarter wasn't good. Disastrous first half. Um, I think a huge, and again, a huge impact, like credit to Grant Williams. Um, 
I don't like him because number one, he's good. And number two, because like he did start doing some floppy stuff, some little bit of dirty stuff in the second half. You, and you might not even seen it. He had a play with Pat where he kind of like hooked his arm a bit or like pinned down his arm and pushed him away and stuff like, um, and so I don't, I, I don't like Grant Williams. I don't, it pains me to say, but like he, he, he changed the game with how he was able to defend Giannis one-on-one. Cause if you don't have to bring the help over, that's what, you know, again, if you have to bring help, Giannis is able to just pick that apart. If you can have someone who can hold their own one-on-one, it changes everything. Cause all of a sudden you don't have to bring the help over. It's not opening up all these threes and you know, Giannis was struggling to score against it. So it really changes everything in the box offense. Um, but again, yeah, like what I like to see was in the second half, Giannis started to, they started to find the mismatches more. He got into more switches where he'd have um, someone else on him besides Grant Williams or besides Horford. Even, you know, Horford, he was able to score against a few times. He scored a few times against Grant. Um, I felt like Giannis just kind of found the mismatches more instead of just trying to force it against Grant Williams, which clearly didn't work in the first half. So getting to that will be key, you know, going forward is, is being able to, to get the mismatches you want. I thought, he looked more confident on his drives where he's, you know, again, the first half, it's like he'd start to, you're not in his drives, even just on, you know, backing guys down or facing guys up, going one-on-one attacking. Like he just seemed like he was more confident, decisive. Whereas first half, you know, he again, do those fadeaways and stuff. And it's like, you know, go right at these guys. Like, I don't know. It was, it, the first half was so frustrating and someone um, tweeted or someone in the comments I know before said, and I just, uh, I just actually quoted it shot quality. I don't know if you know who shot quality is. They do like these stats on, you know, and, and it's based on, it's very advanced stuff. It's based on um, the player shooting, you know, who's defending all this stuff, the quality of the shot they're getting. And it, you know, measures out over the course of the game, which team is getting the better shots, which team is expected to win based on the quality of shots that they took. Mm-hmm. And in this game, it was dead. Even bucks would win 50% of the time. Celtics would win 50% of the time. It expected it to be a very, very close game. It obviously was not. Yeah. And that does tell you that the Celtics, I mean, they shot lights out. And, and some of them were open threes. The Bucs and play better defensively. But, like, the reality is it was an outlier shooting game for both teams. The Bucs made three threes in the whole entire game. They were three for 18. The Celtics were 20 for 43. Like, they they hit 17 more threes than we did, um, which is not going to happen ever. Like, that's, I think, they said the, the largest – margin of like three point makes between two teams, like the differential. I think the only time it's been bigger was like they, someone said it was like golden state in 2016 against someone like they made, you know, more than, but it's like, you're never going to make 17 more threes than a team. Like this just doesn't happen. So going forward again, I, I, I look at game one, I look at game two and I say game one is a lot less of an outlier. When you look at all the numbers, um, you know, game one buck shot 35% from three and the Celtic shot 36 they actually made six more threes than we did. Giannis was good, but he wasn't, you know, he didn't have a 40 point game or something. Um, Drew was good, but didn't have a huge game. Like it seemed like it was sustainable stuff. We held Tatum and, and Brown in check in that game, but that seems like something they are capable of doing. And they did it in the second half today with, you know, Drew and Wes and everything. I think they're capable of doing that. Like game one was not really an outlier in any way. Um, whereas again, you come to game two and the Celtics make 23s, the Bucks only make three. Jalen Brown goes absolutely nuclear. Giannis had one of the worst halves of his life in the first half. And I just look at all that and I'm like, that that's just not going to normally happen. So going forward, like I'm more confident that things will be closer to game one than they will be for game two. Um, I don't know if you feel the same way. No, I hundred percent do. And like you, I want to kind of talk about what you said before about um, they didn't have to move over and help Giannis or help on Giannis defensively. Mm-hmm. And that's where I was getting really frustrated is like they continue to feed him on that left block. And it was the same thing trying to back down Grant Williams. And it's like if the same thing's happening and they don't need the help, not, not only is the ball stagnant, but now they're like, okay, we can just stick on our man. So by continuing to do the same thing, it just it made their defense look even better. And Another thing is I wish we'd get downhill more, a little more on um, when we're setting screens because so many times we'll set a screen and it's like, oh, we got Giannis like backing it out or Drew backing it out. It's like I didn't see him, you know, and like you said, I only watched the first half, but I didn't see him, I don't think, once have Giannis set a screen and try to roll to the hoop and Drew come off hard. It's like it's always backing away from the hoop. Why don't we get stuff going to the hoop? That helps open up the offense. And that was something that I was going to mention this next. 
huge thing. It really, it, we saw it in the fourth quarter. It took them so long to get to it. But in the fourth quarter, they really got to Giannis setting screens for guards and the guards would attack. And the way Horford and Grant Williams were defending the pick and roll, they were staying on Giannis. They weren't, they weren't going to the ball handler. And so the, the guards would be able to get right to the rim. And, you know, if someone comes over, you can then kick it out. But otherwise, they were getting right to the rim, getting some layups. And, you know, the announcers picked up on it. People were, you know, it, people picked up on it that this, you know, all of a sudden it was like, okay, this is kind of what you have to do to attack this defense. You know, yeah. set screens with Giannis, get him going to the hoop. You know, I got, if they're going to come off of Giannis, they did a couple times. And, you know, right away we got it to Giannis. He either got fouled or scored. Yeah. And then if they don't, you have, you know, you're attacking the hoop and you're getting right to the rim. And Pat scored on a few of them. I think Javon Carter scored on one. Like, Drew was scoring and it was really something, again, that's something that I'm, I'm made me a lot more confident going forward. Cause I'm like, they kind of figured out a little bit of a way to, to start to attack this, to start to, and they, they got to it way too late. As you said, the first half, I didn't like the offense at all. Um, you know, and I think, again, going back to the whole idea of like, they didn't need a double Giannis. Um, maybe that's part of the reason is they just assumed that they're going to bring doubles with Giannis or doubles on Giannis every time and stuff. And um, and when they didn't, it might've surprised them a bit. They didn't know quite how to handle it. And so that might've contributed to it. And then maybe in the second half, they realized like, we got to start, um, attacking this. And the reality is if they're not going to double Giannis, we're not going to get as many threes. Like we didn't, we didn't pass up, you know, we only made three threes. We only took 18. I don't think we passed up a ton of like open looks. It's just that we didn't get as many. Cause again, they didn't bring those doubles. And so if they're not getting as many, you know, if they're not going to get as many open looks and you're going to, and you're going to, you know, play the way the defense that they did tonight, we got to attack the paint. We got to do like, that's kind of got to be how we have to adjust this instead of relying on threes all the time. If they're not doubling Giannis, like we're going to have to just attack the paint, pick and rolls and go. Um, and again, I think they picked up on it in the second half and that's going to be huge going forward. Cause you got to have that, like, no matter what they do, you got to have a, a, a way of scoring. If they're not doubling on us, you got to be able to attack the paint. If they're doubling on us, you got to be able to kick it out, hit threes, whatever case, whatever the case may be, open things up. Um, but that was something that I liked that they picked up later and at least gave me some confidence going forward. And again, you didn't really see that, but yeah, but no, I'm I'm very glad to hear that because that was the biggest thing after I watched the first half was like there's no ball movement, and I didn't like that we weren't getting anything downhill towards the river because it's like if we go out there and we're getting good shots and obviously like you said the shot quality was sounds like kind of there if it was 50 50 yeah um when probability to what probability wise um but it's like if we're getting to the rim we're just missing shots i can live with that but when our offense just doesn't look good at all it's even more frustrating um so but like you said that gives me you know makes me feel a lot better because hopefully they'll bring that out to start the game and that's going to change the way that the Celtics play defense a little bit, um, kind of like the way they did today with not having the bring the double over. So then maybe it opens it up for Giannis more. And it just you don't have to force it to him because he can he can get to the line, he can get offensive rebounds and putbacks, he can throw down lobs. Like there's so many ways to get him involved and get him going, and then be ready to feed him on the block. Like he's not that great of a pulse player where it's just like oh give it to him and let him go to work, you know like. There's times where it can be very good, but Grant Williams is tough to move. So yeah, and someone just said, uh, someone just commented, is uh, is Grant Williams going to be a problem moving forward? And I definitely like. I think so. Like I think again, his ability to at least keep you from like having keep the defense from having to help on Giannis and and being able to contain him a little bit one on one, it helps so much because it changes again. It changes entirely how the Bucks um, you know play their offense and and how they have to respond to it. And so if he, you know, he's like, again, when Giannis backs on other guys, I feel like he's able to just kind of create space. He's able to quickly like, um, you know, move them easier than he is Grant Williams. I think, you know, having that from Grant Williams, the strength he has and everything, he's, he's a really good defender. So having that, he's going to definitely be a problem. He's something, you know, I, I watched today. I was like, he really did change the game. I think he was probably Jalen Brown was their offensive MVP. I think Grant Williams was their overall MVP because he was good on offense. He hit like six threes and he played fantastic defense. Um, so, yeah, he will be a problem. Like you said, though, I mean, I think, I think too, with Giannis, like with his, you know, getting the ball in the post or getting the ball in the in the, the high post, whatever the case may be, I feel like, you know, backing guys down, it's a little bit harder for him to kind of like, like he then kind of is forced to, to 
maybe do a step back or like turn around or whatever. Mm-hmm. I like there was a couple times in the second half he got the ball and instead of backing guys down, he quickly squared him up, you know, and fi- and faces him up and and he's then it's way harder to stay in front of him because he's yeah. just been trying to blow by you and he's he's face to the hoop and that's what I think he needs to get to more of like because if if you're gonna play him one on one, again backing a guy down one on one isn't the same. Like I think Giannis is more effective when he faces a guy up one on one and attacks from there. And he did it a couple of times today. I know like he did it to Grant Williams a couple of times and like scored on him. It seems like it makes it a lot easier than when you just have to defend Giannis and have him back down. Um, Cause Giannis is best when he's got his, you know, when he's facing the hoop and he's driving um, and you have to stay in front of him because of his quickness, his strength and everything. So I think doing that from Giannis is better. And yeah, I mean, I, I, hopefully the Bucks can somehow create more three point looks. I mean, again, they're not going to make three threes, you know, probably ever in another game this playoffs like they're gonna usually be hitting 10 whatever um and defensively it's like what so grant williams was six for nine and i think tatum and brown were 11 for 20 like six for 10 five for 10 or something like that yeah uh with uh jalen brown yeah six for 10 from three tatum five of 10 and grant williams six of nine so pritchard Pritchard was two of four too say that again and pritchard was two of four as well yeah it's like they had everybody just knocking down shots. Today. Grant Williams is not going to hit six threes again. And can Brown and Tatum shoot like that? Yes. But more than likely, they're more of like a four of 11 from three or like a three of 10. And that like that might not sound like that big of a difference, but when it leads to a stop and then we go get a score and different momentum shifts, like it all adds up. So that's the other thing too, it just like, they hit their shots. Like I'm not worried about Grant Williams hitting six threes against us every game. Because yeah, and we said I want I want to force the other guys to beat us. And today we just let Brown get going way too early. Yeah, and um, someone said too bad Giannis can't shoot. And I mean it's a Celtics fan, but whatever. I mean, it is a pro. Like it, it it is like okay, like you know Giannis should ideally be if he's closer to his regular season shooting, you know, he's, a, he's much more effective. He hit a couple of mid ranges. Again, you didn't see this, but he hit a couple of mid ranges in the second half. He hit a three in the second half, um, got the shot going a bit, which again, in the first half, that didn't help either. Like Grant Williams was sagging way off of him. And, you know, Giannis missed a bunch of shots right away. Yeah. And then, I mean, kind of smart, like I didn't want him to keep shooting. He kind of stopped shooting a little bit. Um, and even, you know, they just be able to, to, to sag off him and that helps them defend other, other areas. So, um, yeah, I mean, Giannis is just going to continue, you know, I think, you know, continue to feed him the ball, obviously. And I, I'm expecting that the Celtics will, con- like, for at least the start of game three, put Grant Williams on him and, you know, go try to try to win the one-on-one a little bit like he did early in this game. And, um, you know, if if that – if that's effective, it's going to take away the three. But it, you know, again, if the Bucks can go to what they did in the fourth quarter and start to do pick and rolls with Giannis and start to attack the paint more rather than settling for jumpers and actually get some offense going, I think they'll be okay moving forward. Even if Grant Williams can play good defense on Giannis, um, and yeah, Giannis is going to get his. He had twenty eight today. Like he's going to pick it up at some point, get in transition, um, get to the hoop, get fouled, whatever. So I'm never like too worried about Giannis. The f- and, he didn't or go ahead. No, I was just gonna say the other thing too is like it felt like they totally went off, but what they it was they had 109, right? Like 109 yeah. to 86. Like 109 is what do we at? I mean, I know Boston's like the best defense in the league, but you know, like we were averaging, I thought, like what 114 a game. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm not saying I expect us to put up that much every game in a playoff series and especially against them, but it's like it felt like they just hit everything today and they still didn't even get to 110. So it's like, they're not going to shoot that well, hopefully again throughout the series. Maybe there's one more game where they, you know, can't miss, but it's like, if we just had our offense going, I mean, we're right. We're still somehow right in that game. So I'm really not that worried. I think the first half, especially the first quarter, just the way it started made it feel a lot worse. But um, even though I didn't get to watch, I'm glad that we, pretty much kept it even the whole second half. Yeah, and the second half, I mean, they said 65 in the first half. They only had 44 in the second half, and they went 7 of 23 from 3 after going 13 of 20 in the first half. So, again, our, our second half defense was a lot better. Yeah. Um, and, and, again, it made me happy. That I was like, okay, it seems like on both ends 
we figured some stuff out. And if we play, you know, if we had, if we didn't need to take a whole first half to figure this out, we, you know, we'd be okay. Um, and so going forward, I'm, I'm still feeling good. I still think the Bucks win this series. One thing, I mean, we haven't even talked about it because I like, we kind of know he's not coming back. And so it's like, not even, it's not necessarily relevant to talk about it, but like Chris Middleton not being there hurts us a ton. I mean, in, oh, yeah. in this situation, especially because again, what we're talking about this, you know, this whole time with, you know, Giannis either getting doubled and kicking it out to shooters or Giannis not getting doubled and you have to do pick and roll stuff. It would help so much if you just had an ISO player that you could throw to every now and then and, um, you know, go get a bucket or, or like, and that's what Chris obviously was. Hurts not having that um, on the offensive side. And we, that, we saw that today. And the people who, there were people claiming like, oh, you know, are the Bucks better without Chris? Like, get out of here. I mean, it, yeah. he played well. I'm happy guy stepped up in his absence. But, like, we need to have that shot creator. You know, Drew is the closest thing we have. And Drew's been pretty good the last couple of games, by the way. Like, I, I'm pretty pleased with him offensively overall. He hasn't been perfect, but I'm not really expecting that. Um, But, yeah, we we have absolutely missed uh, – we we absolutely miss Chris Middleton tonight, especially when again when they're when they're not helping on Giannis, and all of a sudden it kind of like makes everything one on one a little bit, and you have to work based on that. It's just not having that ISO guy like really hurts. Yeah, I mean he's one of the best in the league at being able to hit tough shots with a hand in his face. Like so, to not have that to open up the offense and like you said to just be able to give it to somebody. Like Holiday wasn't great today even though, like you said, he'd been really good the past few games um, or, you know, gotten better than it was really solid in game one. Um, that, like you said, hurts a lot, even though it's like, oh, we don't have for the series. I was kind of su- almost surprised that uh, the Celtics played as good pretty much defensively without Smart, too. I don't know what you thought about that. but Yeah, I mean, Marcus Smart's not their best defender, though. Like, yeah, let's just call it like it is. I think Grant Williams is better for sure. I think Robert Williams. Robert Williams is up Robert. there. I mean, the way Tatum defended Katie and stuff, Tatum's been really good defensively. Um, I mean, he's an important defender for them, but like, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not going to get into that because I know people will just, <laughs> everyone, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just not a huge believer in like the value of, like, I don't think Marcus Smart's the most valuable defender. I don't think he's the best defender on that team. Very good defender, but like, I don't know. I don't, I, but again, we won't talk about that. Anyways, um, yeah, going back to um, Drew Holiday, like I am happy with – again, he hasn't been perfect. I mean, he was good in game one, 25 points, 8 of 20. Today, 19 points, 7 of 20. Like not fantastic efficiency, but again, like yeah. it's that's all you get. Like that's all we're asking for with how good he's been defensively. And he hasn't turned the ball over a lot. He had two turnovers game one, five assists. Tonight, seven assists, three turnovers. You're fine. Like that's 12 assists, five turnovers, um, around like 40 some to 45% shooting ish. Like that's completely fine. And I like that we've seen that from him. I like that he's been able to go get some buckets for us. Again, compared to that Bulls series early on, it was like, he can't do anything. Like this is actually a concern. Um, it's been nice to see him and he's got to continue to kind of be without Chris. If you need a bucket, like he's got to be the bucket getter because he's our best, um, isolation type of perimeter kind of player. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I think Grayson was kind of disappointed. I think Pat was good. I think Pat could have played more in the third quarter tonight. He came in in the fourth and played a lot, but they left Grayson in there for a while. And I thought Pat deserved more minutes, ended up six of seven for 13 points. And Grayson just wasn't doing much out there. He wasn't getting the looks that he, Again, in largely in part because they didn't have to double Giannis, but he wasn't getting the looks he normally gets. And yeah, but again, I'm I'm happy what they went into in the fourth quarter of the pick and rolls with Giannis as the screener, and it really did open some things up. So going forward, I feel good. What's your what's your concern level? And again, some of this just has to be based on what I've told you about the second half because you didn't see yeah. it. But what's your concern level? Zero to ten, ten being most concerned going forward. Honestly, it's probably like a three or four. And the concern is more just off of like the self, you know, like, like you said, this was way more of an outlier than game one, but it, the Celtics are pretty much right in the middle of how they played game one and how they played today. It's like, it was pretty much their closer to their floor and then closer to their ceiling today. So it's like, 
I'm my only worry is just that I know they're a pretty solid team when they play how they can. But if you told me it was one one going back home, I don't care how we how we lose really, like if we would have got our butts kicked the whole game, no changes, you know, then it's maybe a little more annoying. But play with them the second half. Say, look, they just hit their shots in the first half. We have to live with it. We go back home. Um, I'm not overly worried. But, yeah. I'd put myself at probably a three. And, yeah, Boston's very good. I mean, I I, I picked us in seven in this series. Like, I was like, they're going to they're gonna give us a fight. Um. After game one, I, you know, I, I definitely was thinking of like, okay, we can maybe win this thing in, you know, even four or five, like depending on if if we come out game two and look just as good. Um, but Boston's very good. And again, and again, having Grant Williams able to, you know, the way he's able to defend Giannis raises a little bit more concern, like where it's like, okay, they're, you know, that could cause some problems. Um, but seeing that they got something out of this game, seeing that, Giannis started to get it going a little bit makes you makes me you know otherwise I would have been more at like a six or seven because it's all of a sudden you know again you have those questions of like is you know is Giannis going to be able to actually get anything going in this series is this just going to be um you know is their defense too good for us but I I don't think it was I thought we, we looked pretty good in the second half um and I think they got to get it to Brooke more. He, yeah, yeah. He had two two points, one of two shooting, um, and again with 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 how they're defending Giannis, like and again having to attack the paint. I think they got to feed it down to Brooke a little bit more, um, use that size advantage. It doesn't have to be all the time, but just more than they have been. So that's something I think they can work on, and yeah, just getting getting more threes, hitting more threes. That that should come. They're not gonna they're not gonna make three three. Like as I said, that's again mainly like. The shooting is going to come back to closer to what it was in game one. Like, mm-hmm. com, you know, shooting 36% each is way less of an outlier than one team shooting 47% and making 23s and the other team shooting 17 and making three. Like, that's just yeah. not going to happen. So, overall, probably like a three. I think we win game three. Um, get that crowd going. Win game three. Put the pressure on them. And then it's going to really come down to game four. I mean, if they can come out game four and really look good again, like, man, if we can go 3-1, that'd be awesome. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It, I mean, it also could flip. And what if Boston comes out and hit and plays well game three, then all of a sudden, you know, pressure's on us for game four. So game three is huge. Every, every game is huge. But I think I think with the crowd, the crowd better be good too. Vice got to get going. Yeah. We, that, we, Bulls, we, that, Bull, that Bulls series wasn't great. Game – now game one, uh, game two. So I was at games two and yes. five. Two wasn't very good, but that maybe was more just because we weren't playing that well. And uh, when we started playing well, when we went on some runs, it got pretty loud. Game five was not good for the most part, and we played really well. It just there was not that many, like not that many people super into it. It wasn't super loud, but I'm fully expecting Fiserv's got to Fiserv's got to get get rocking. You have you know a one one series against a, a higher seed. This has to be a, an electric crowd. Yeah, I'm quite frankly, I'm kind of sick of hearing all these weak crowds because we, I feel like we have them a lot. I've been hearing a lot of loud crowds on TV. So if you're at the game, stand up. I don't care if security's yelling at you. We're standing all the time in Brooklyn. We don't care. And it led to a win. So I want to hear it loud. I want to hear it crazy on TV. All right. Your prediction for the series after this game? I'm going to go, I don't know what I originally had, but. I'm going to go Bucks in seven. Now, is that because I want it to? Yeah. No, yes, no. I want to go seven. But I I don't know. I could see us. I just – I think maybe we split at home, so it's 2-2. Two, two. <coughs> Probably go there. It's like, yeah, maybe, you know, we go back and lose. We come back, win a tough game six at home, and it just goes to seven there, and I, I think we can pull it out. So, I don't know. That just seems like the type – I said we said before this series it's most likely going to six or seven. Like these are arguably the two best teams in the East. Just to explain to people why Brandon wants to go seven, <laughs> because we will we're gonna go to game seven if it goes seven. So we wanna have the experience. But yeah, obviously if we can get it done before then that'd be ideal. Save us some money. Um yeah. I think I'm gonna go six. Um I don't know, I don't know exactly how it's gonna happen. Like 
I kind of want to say it's going to be 2-2 two, two after four and we like win a game five, win a game six. But part of me also thinks it's going to be 3-1 and then they get one and um, it comes back and we win. I don't know. I, I, I'm i just going to say Bucks and six, though. I I think, you know, again, I probably would have said seven if we hadn't played better in the first half today or in the second half today. Um, I would have said, okay, we're probably going to, you know, need maybe another game to adjust to this and figure things out and um, figure out how to you know play against this defense. Might, you know, we might drop one of these two games and it'll for sure be 2-2. Two, two. They might win game, you know, five on at home, and then we have to force a game seven. Like, I just I feel confident that that we can at home figuring some stuff out in the second half today that we can come out and and you know at least go up two one if not three one mm-hmm. and put the pressure on them and end up winning in six. So I'm gonna go with Bucks and six is my prediction. My original was Bucks and seven, but I'm, I'm and I, either one. I, I don't you know we'll take either one. I don't care how many games they win, in, but uh, I'll go as of right now Bucks and six. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Anything else you want to say? Uh, no, but let's go Bucks. Got to, like you said, it's a big game three. Every, every game's big, but, uh, you got to come out and play good at home. So now, we got three whole days in between these games. They don't play till Saturday. So yeah, I don't know why that is. I, or I think there might be something going on on Friday. There's a, there's like a concert at Fiserv on Friday, I think. So good planning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for us. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Box and six.